what we're going to be looking at here is where we issue a bond between interest payments. The example is going to be based on a bond issued at a premium and we're going to be using a straight line method here to amortize this bond premium. Uh, for the example here is where Corporation A issues $900,000 worth of 12% 10-year bonds on 5120X1 at 106 or 106% of the par value here. Now the interest is payable semi-annually here on 1-1 and 7-1 each year here and the bonds are dated here on 1-1 20X1. Now Corporation A uses the straight line method here again for amortizing any bond premium or discounts on the bonds here. Now the key is is the bonds are dated here on 1120X1, but they're only going to issue them here uh, four months later here in 5120X1. So that's what we're talking about here when they are, we're issuing these bond be bonds between interest payments, and we have to determine how this interest is calculated here. Okay. Let's move down here now. The straight line method we're 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 going to amortize at a constant amount each period here. So we're going to be have ten years of bond, uh, ten years on these bonds here, and semi normally they're semi annually here, so they'd be paying out twice per year. So we'd have 20 semi-annual payments here. Now the total months that we're going to be looking at, so this is really the key that we're going to have to look at here. The total months, we're going to have 10 years times 12 months per year or 120 months. Now the amortized months, well we have a total of 120 months here but the four months um, they're issued four months here after the stated date here. So these first four months aren't going to be included here in calculating the number of months amortized. So we'd subtract those out here and we're going to come up with 116 months that we have to amortize these bonds. And again, the actual amortized bonds, since they're issued four months here after stated date here. So let's just look at that again. The stated date here was 1120X1 issued here on 5120X1. So this is where those four months here uh, come into play here. So and those aren't included in our for amortizing the total uh, 10 years of the bonds here. So we're going to only amortize them here 116 months. And our example here is where we're going to be paying the interest annually here. Now uh, for our uh, for these bonds here they're actually semi-annual payments but for simplicity here we're just going to be paying the total uh, the two semi-annual payments here at the end of the year here, or, or paying the interest annually on them here. So let's go look at our example here. So again outlining our example here the bond interest is payable here in 1-1 and 7-1 semi-annually and we're going to be looking at a yearly total amount here. So you got 12% um, per year here, $900,000 par value of the bonds here. So we're going to have $108,000 worth of interest here per year. Now two things we have to look at here when we're issuing these bonds between interest dates. Number one here, the buyer of the bonds uh, pay the seller here the interest accrued from the last interest payment date. In this case it's 11X1, the stated uh, date here on those bonds, to the date of issue or 51 uh, X1 here. So we've got four months of accrued interest here that the um, buyer is going to pay the seller here. Okay, so number two here. On the next semi-annual interest payment date, the buyer will receive the full semi-annual interest payment. So on 7-1 uh, here, they're going to receive the full semi-annual interest payment. Now they had to pay for the first month here. The buyer has to pay the seller here the first month. But the buyer uh, is going to receive the full um, interest payment here in 7-1. So that's the key here that we'll be looking at here on issuing these bonds between interest payment dates. Okay, so our calculations here. The bond, we have four months of accrued interest, 1-1 one, one through 5-1 or 4 twelfths of a year here. So the accrued interest that we're going to be having on these bonds <coughs> is going to be 900,000 here times the 12% times four months here for $36,000. Those that is that's the accrued interest here between 1-1 and 5-1. And we're also going to have an amortization amount here of $3,724 that we're going to look at how this is what we're going to uh, focus in here on calculating here. Again, our example here is for the year-end amortize amortization and interest here, uh, not semi-annually. We have to use this semi-annual dates for calculating our issue, our interest expense here between interest dates, but uh, for to simplify it here, we're just going to record our amortization and interest expense at the year-end for the total uh, two semi-annual payments here. Alright, so let's go down and look at what we'd be looking at here. So we're going to have our 
asset account here, our cash account, and then we're going to have our liabilities account here. We're going to have a bonds payable, a premium on our bonds payable, and then we're going to have some interest payable here, and then we're going to, on our income statement here, we're going to have some interest expense. So our liabilities are going to be sitting here on our balance sheet here, and then we've got our asset account here, our cash. So let's look at our issue date here. Okay, what what we have, we have we would credit our bonds payable here on 51X uh, X1 here, the issue date here for $900,000. That was the total par value on the bonds here. And then what we're going to have to determine is the premium on the bonds. So remember, they were issued here at 106%. So 106% um, of the $900,000 is going to give us $954,000, the cash received. So we would debit our cash account for $954,000, and then we needed a crediting amount since they were issued at a premium here. Here, we would credit our premium account here by $54,000. The face value or par value $900,000 plus the credit amount here of $54,000 to our premium account here in our bonds payable adds up to the cash we received here of $954,000. Now the other thing that we have is that accrued interest that we have to work with here. So uh, they would have, the bond issuer here would have received $36,000 worth of accrued interest here in 51X1. And remember we calculated that here by the $900,000 times 12% per year and that was so those first four months here, four twelfths of a month. So they would have received that here. So we debit our cash account for that accrued interest here of $36,000. And then the associating credit would go to our interest expense here for those bonds issued again here on our income statement for $36,000 here at 5-1 here. So, okay, we've taken care of our accrued interest here plus the cash that we're receiving here at the bonds because they were uh, issued here at 106% here. Okay, so next let's look at, uh, let's go into this bond premium here. Okay, and this is where we have to calculate, this is the key here, this is where we have to calculate, reduce the premium here for this. We're going to be looking at the first, the year end here for the first year here, 1231X1. So what we would do here, again, remember the total premium amount here is $54,000, and what we're going to have is eight months in the year here. So uh, remember the first four months didn't count, that we were issued here at 5-1, so we're from 5-1 here through the end of the year, we have eight months here. Then their fractional amount here is going to be for that 116 months that we're talking about. Remember we had the total here of uh, 10 years, 12 months per year, that was at 120 months, but the first four months don't count here. We have to subtract those out. So this is where we come up with that 116 uh, months here. And those 116 months, that's the amortized amount here. The four months, again, are not included based on that issue date. So our fractional amount, we take the eight months here for the year over the total amount here of 116 months for the uh, life of those bonds times that $54,000 premium, we get the $3,724. So our premium here would be reduced by that amortized amount here. Again at the year end here of $3,724. Now the associated credit entry here would go to our interest expense account here for $3,724. Now what we have to note here is that this interest expense is actually being reduced by the amount of that premium amortization here. It's not uh, increasing any interest expense, it's reducing it. And also the note here, the interest interest expense uh, for that accrued interest here of $36,000 reduces our interest expense because we're, we're receiving that up front here when we issued the bond is receiving it in advance here but we're going to it's actually owed or it's going to be um, it's it's going to have to be owed here later on but this is just to show here that reduces our interest expense here on our income statement again that 9 uh, 36000 here was that 900000 times 12% times 4 months here for the first 4 months of the year here $36,000 worth of accrued interest okay so we've taken care of our amortization here the premium again at the year end here that was for the total amount here now what we have here is interest payable here. Now because it, they pay it out here uh, uh, at the next period here, 1, 1, 20 x2 here we have to accrue it here for the year end here and that was a hundred and eight thousand dollars that was um, our and we're gonna look at it here that's gonna be our interest 
expense here. We're going to have set up a payable here on our balance sheet as a liability of 108000 That was the 12 months interest here, $900,000 face value times 12% here per year, $108,000. So we credit our interest payable here on our balance sheet and then the associating entry go to our interest expense on our income statement here for $108,000 here on 1231X1. So we are on our income statement here we recognize their expense here but now it's not going to be payable here until 11x2 here that date here so that was the payment date we're looking at here so we debit our our interest payable take that off the books here by hundred eight thousand dollars that's going to our cash payment so then going up here for our cash payment on the balance sheet here 1231x1 we're reducing our cash here by that hundred and eight thousand dollars okay I guess we've taken care of all our entries here but what we want to make clear on here is that this cash here remember that was that uh, the accrued amount here because it was received or we accrue it or it was accrued interest that we're going to receive here because it was issued between the dates here so the buyer is going to pay the seller of the bonds the amount of that interest and remember that was uh, that first four months of interest here at 12 percent based on the $900,000 face value of the bonds for a total amount here of $36,000 and then remember that goes to the interest expense here um, credit that here on our income statement so we would actually be reducing our interest expense here on our income statement by $36,000 and then the other key point here is just remember here and in this case it was a bond premium we had to amortize that bond premium down here now the key is here because it was issued between interest dates here the first four months of that first uh, interest payment here don't doesn't count here since it was issued here on 5-1 I guess um, 20x1 and the stated date on that bond was 1-1 20x1 so those first four months have to be subtracted out from the total number of months that we're amortizing here so in this case we had 120 months less the four months gives us 116 and that fractional amount and then we are we since it was issued between dates here we get that for we get the amortize it here from 5-1 through the end of the year and that was eight months here and that was goes against and that fractional amount here eight divided by 116 total months we're amortizing times the premium amount gives us the amortized amount here debit or reduce our premium account here so I guess we've covered everything here just remember take care of your accrued interest here and you also have to recognize your proper interest expense for that accrued interest here and also the in this case it was the amortizing of the premium which was reducing our interest expense in both cases alright so that takes care of our issuing of bonds between interest dates